What's up everybody, Isai Salinas here from San Antonio, Texas, and I wanna welcome you to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about overclocking using the MSI Afterburner app. Now, if you're looking for just a little bit of free performance out of the graphics card you're already using, we got the MSI GeForce GTX 1660 Super, and we're gonna be uh, overclocking this card today. Basically, overclocking gives you a little bit of a performance boost. It's all free. A little bit of free performance doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, will give you a little bit of a boost in frames per second. You know, not necessarily like, you know, a huge boost. A lot of people will say they don't really notice a difference, but I notice a difference in terms of input lag. So if you're playing like a first person shooter, such as Call of Duty, I noticed that it's a little more on point with input versus, you know, uh, depending how much overclock you do. But today we're going to be just doing a very simple, basic overclock that, you know, all you have to do is just move a couple of sliders, click a couple of uh, options in the menu, and that'll be it. So this will apply to pretty much anybody using MSI Afterburner. If you're using an RTX card, the MSI Afterburner app has a feature that will scan your card, your setup for the best possible uh, overclocking and then it'll apply that for you. Basically, we're just gonna be running through a basic MSI afterburner setup and then changing a couple of things in the NVIDIA control panel. So without further ado, let's hop into the screen. All right, so one of the first things that we wanna do here is we're gonna right click on the home screen and you're gonna see right here, it says NVIDIA control panel. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click that. And this is gonna be the first step to getting a performance boost out of your graphics card. So, uh, we're gonna click on that, wait for it to load. And we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to the left, you're gonna click on Manage 3D Settings. This should be the first one, the, the second one in the drop down. And we're gonna go over here to the screen that pops up. We're gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for Power Management Mode. And it's gonna say Optimal Power, but what we're gonna change it to is Prefer Maximum Performance. So this will give you maximum performance as often as possible. And then the next thing that we're gonna uh, change is we're gonna go to texture filtering, we're gonna go to quality, and we're gonna go to high performance. You're gonna go down, you're gonna click apply. And it's the first step is literally that simple to giving you an immediate boost from your graphics card. Now, this is a part that usually scares most people, but um, I'll put a link for it in the description, but it's super easy, super simple. You're gonna wanna download MSI Afterburner, this app here that I have in the corner of my screen. You're gonna wanna download that, you know, make sure you run the program. If you need help with that, I'll put a link in the description uh, of the video. You're gonna click on it. You're gonna say yes. When you first open up MSI Afterburner, uh, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna have kinda like this, uh, you know, car-like interface. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come over here to the settings. And most likely your settings are gonna have these three boxes unchecked. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check the unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. Those are gonna be the first three things that you want to make sure that are checked, just like this. So we're gonna hit you know, apply. We're gonna hit okay. And now, are you gonna, now what that'll do is that'll open up this right here, the core voltage. And we're gonna use one of the, the profile that I already made. It's safe, it's tested. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys, okay. All right, everything's maxed out on those first four. So we're gonna reset this. And basically what you're gonna do, you can go slide it all the way to the right change the power limit and put it all the way to the right, which will automatically correlate with the temp, uh, the temperature limit. So all of these, all these three should be to the far right. And then for the core clock, we're going to go to hundred, which is what I have set here. And we're going to go to 500 there. So again, we're going to go all the way to the right, all the way to the right. We're going to go to 100 for the core clock. Type that in. You can just type it in actually. And then for the memory clock, we're gonna go right here. You can just type in 500. And then you'll hit the check mark on mine. I'll make sure, yep, 100, 500. And then what you'll do is you'll hit apply. And one thing you wanna make sure is that 
you also save it. I have mine saved to profile five just in case, you know, as I do more advanced overclocks, I can have the profile set. And that is literally in the shortest and quickest way to get a performance boost out of your graphics card. So what I went ahead and did is I also uh, went to a website called userbenchmark.com and they have a speed test so you can speed your test you can speed test your computer in about a minute or two it really takes about two minutes um, it's a free download and I'm gonna show you the before and after results of uh, overclocking these are my results before overclocking so I went ahead and I ran that user benchmark and I can actually come over here as well and my performance results were 71 for gaming 88 for desktop and 78 for as a workstation um it says overall this pc is performing above expectations 82nd percentile that means that uh 18 only 18 computers with my particular setup or you know uh, off of my as rock b450m motherboard uh only 18 perform better um you can see my processor outstanding score um got a score of 90.9 my GPU this is before overclocking got a 70.6 boot drive the SSD uh, RAM 16 gigabytes of RAM kind of gives you all this information very very helpful stuff uh, if you want to learn more about your computer kind of what each thing does so you can see here we scroll down 90 70 119 got an outstanding score uh, almost 120 on that then my RAM so it gives you, you know, a nice little layout of different things. You can see here, uh, what we're talking about is I'm using the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. Um, so mine's running a 70.6%, so 85th percentile, which means 15 people's other, 15 other graphics cards on my particular, on this particular kind of setup uh, perform better. So basically the first score on overclocking was 279, 220, 258, 170, 237, and 251 frames per second. Now, this is just like a control um, type of test where you can see if you're actually getting any performance boost at all. I ran the test about three or four times and literally got within half a frame to one or two frames per second difference on each of these scores. And this tended to be the average score that I saw the most often, the 279, 170. The lowest, lowest I saw was 169.7, uh, that kind of thing. Now, after applying the overclocking, uh, got a much different score. So you, you saw that this first one is 279, right? So when we go to the overclocked after, broke 300. So that's a 24 frame per second difference after uh, going into the NVIDIA control panel and turning on max performance, preferred maximum performance. And then after going into MSI Afterburner, and also doing just a super simple overclock, very minimal. And uh, we got a 24 frame per second boost on that first test. On the second test, it was a 18.4 frame per second difference. On the stones, it was a 18.7 uh, frame per second difference. The swarm was a 17.3 frame per second uh, difference. Galaxy was 15.7, sphere was 18.2. Uh, so in total that averaged out to getting a performance boost on in terms of frames per second of 18.71 frames per second total getting you know on average you know maybe a 15 to 20 or maybe a, a 10 to 25 frame per second boost is can be super huge um, for a lot of people uh, particularly like I was mentioning earlier um, a huge decrease or a huge increase in input lag um, and that input lag can be super important if you if say you're playing a first person shooter like Call of Duty and you need the input to be more on point you know sometimes you do like it's like you have that feeling of like I know I shot him like I know I got that guy and then you look at the replay and it's like oh the replay shows you didn't get him but a lot of that comes down to input lag and because uh, what you're seeing is a little bit uh, is, is delayed the the input is delayed 
that that's what they call it input lag. All right, so now we're gonna have these side by side. And you're gonna see here on the left side is before, and on the right side is after. So you can see just in gaming, we got a 3% boost, and then I was able to get a 1% boost out for desktop and workstation, as you can see here accordingly. So it went from having 18 PCs performing better to having 14 PCs uh, performing better, and then also getting a little nice little uh, thing saying this PC is likely operated by a technical master. Now, I am far from a technical master, but that is pretty cool to see, uh, being that, you know, we got such, we got a good enough boost to, you know, really get us into that, the top percentiles. Um, so you can see there's a 0.2 difference in terms of CPU, but this wasn't a CPU overclocking. Um, the main difference being that uh, on the graphics card, we got a boost of 3.3%. So we went from 70.6% before to getting a 73.9. Now I will say I have had this score go as high as almost 75%. It was like 74.7%. And that that definitely helped out in terms of getting, you know, I think it got me up to like a 13 PCs perform better, but you know, I wasn't too, you know, crazy about that. This is this happens to be my average score after overclocking. We went from 85th percentile before overclocking to going up to 98th percentile after overclocking, which is a huge jump. And I will say, when you do this test, and considering that the average benchmark is 69%, you know, you can see that here, going up to, you know, 73.9, pretty much 74% is, will give you a nice boost in, even though you might not see a huge difference on screen, I'm telling you, the biggest difference that I noticed was in terms of input, this test right here shows that we can safely overclock our graphics card without having to do anything crazy, having to go into like root files and, you know, having to search, you know, the web for some crazy, you know, overclocking. If you're just looking for something that is sweet, simple, and is going to give you a boost, this is certainly the way the way to do it and i highly recommend going to this website userbenchmark.com uh trying out their um you know test test your pc um so that we can get a, a solid benchmark and i recommend you know before overclocking doing the test you know two three four times so that way you can kind of get an idea of where your numbers are at and then once you go and you right click on the nvidia control panel and you do those two changes that we talked about and you go into MSI Afterburner and you apply the new profile, you know, make sure you do the before and after tests and do it multiple times that way. You can really begin to understand where you're getting the performance boost. Now it might not be a huge visual change all the time with certain things, but I've certainly noticed just in certain parts of the game where there's definitely a much more fluid motion on the screen and that input is more on point than before. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Uh, let leave me a comment to let me to let me know how uh, this process went for you and uh, if what other stuff you'd like me to cover in the future. So with that being said, you guys have a good one.